live. Y'all see the title. We got a special guest. There's people already in this chat room already. That's what's up. Go ahead and introduce yourself, G. You already know, man. Bezel. Jay Bezel. Philly. Former Dipset member. All that. Okay. Um, we, we conducted a previous interview a couple years ago. Um, but yeah. We're we, we going to touch back on it to, you know, refresh everybody, and then we're going to go straight into the situation. Uh, Why don't you tell everybody how you ended up being a part of the Diplomat brand from Philadelphia? Uh, I knew somebody who had uh, Joel's number. So uh, I got Joel's number. I spit on his answer machine. I, well, I called him. He didn't pick up. I spit on his answer machine, left my phone number, uh, and I guess when that nigga heard that shit, it took a, a couple months to uh, even check his messages, but when he checked his messages, he uh, heard the shit, the nigga called me back, and I was actually going down Atlanta because uh, I had a couple situations, a couple meetings on the table, so... Uh, he said, I need to meet you like before you go down Atlanta. So I went up New York before I went down Atlanta. I actually had a couple deals on the table. Wells just happened to be one of them. Okay. I already had deals on the table. Like, you know what I mean? So for all the motherfuckers out there that be saying, oh, no, nah, you know, he he took a shot on you. Or whatever we, now nah, we took a shot on each other because I had a couple deals already on the fucking table. Okay, so that's the first thing I want to get clear. Okay, so Joel's is your link to the diplomats. Yeah. Okay. Could you describe y'all? Can you describe y'all relationship or what what type of person he was? Before you say that, I have to interject that Joel's was on this platform before. He was very generous with his time. He conducted himself as a professional. I just had to put that out out there. But go ahead, tell me about your um your your exchanges or your relationship with Wells upon meeting him. What type of person was he? Uh, nah, that was my man. Like you know what I mean. I ain't going front and, and say nothing. Like it started off on some business shit, like uh, but it grew into more. Like I would say, you know. Thinking back on it, he, because the business was never right. It was never really that much business going on or business that was right or whatever. So he was more like, it, it became, he was more my man than, than, you know what I'm saying? No homo, like, you know what I mean? Than right. anything. Like, okay. Was, the, was, this, was this a situation where... Y'all, y'all, y'all proceeded into business through a handshake, or you actually signed some documents with? Him? Nah, nah, I ain't never uh signed nothing. Uh, it was a point, uh, you know, with the whole Skull Gang thing, like when he was kicking that off, and you know, paperwork was brought up. Okay, but you know what I'm saying? At that point, we had already been rocking for whatever amount of years. Without yeah. paperwork. So yeah. niggas telling me, you know, paperwork. I'm like, I'm not fucking signing no contract. Like, is a check involved? Yeah. Like, that's what I want to know. Like, is is it a check involved? Niggas like, well, no, nah, you 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 get your check like when you get a distribution deal. All right, well, bring both of them contracts to the table okay. at that time. Like, if it's if it's distribution, once y'all got the distribution. Boom, I signed both of the contracts, the contract for Skull Gang and the contract for distribution. Right. And like that kind of from there, it kind of started going downhill from there. Okay. You said that before the Skull Gang situation happened, y'all had already been putting in some work. Um, you was on the best out, which is a very, very high profile song. How was you, how was you like, how was you compensated for that, if you don't mind me asking? If you wasn't on uh, the contract. Uh the best out. It, it yeah. really that really was uh Duke the God uh situation. Duke came to me, Duke said, uh, you know, yo, can you, you know what I mean, do a hook on this y'all. Originally, 
I wasn't on the hook. Originally, somebody else from the set was on the hook. I can't remember who. Right. Might have, might have been 40 or Hell Rail. I don't I don't know. But when Cam, Cam A and R basically picked the picked the records for Duke album, he didn't even pick the best out track. And then Duke came to me. I don't know if Duke heard something, like he felt something about the song. I don't know. It was the same verses that was on there. It was just a different hook. So he said, yo, can you do a John? I did the hook. It was the best out. When Cam went through it, he picked that as the single. So that's how that went. Uh, I really want compensated, like, in the beginning, royalties and shit on the back end. I still get royalties off that shit. Uh, royalties off the video game. It was on the EA Sports video game, you know, shit like, shit like that. Uh, and I got royalties off it, but it never was like no, you know what I mean? But I ain't mind doing it, you know what I mean? Because right. we came from an era where we was pitting out shit for free. Trying to get on and shit. Yeah, yeah, the work. Was, yeah. so I, I really didn't care about being compensated, uh, you know what I mean? Straight off the back, you know what I mean? Right. This, this evening, um, this, this interview was called into play based on a, a few clips This. I won't say they viral, but they kind of popular. I was keeping track of them. I was watching them. The interview that Joel's did on the Art of Dialogue. What about those interviews prompted this this meeting that me and you had tonight? All right. So I didn't, you know what I mean? I ain't going to say the nigga don't pop up on my radar or on my algorithm because he be popping up on my shit, like on IG. But I I really never even, you know what I mean? like paid attention to the interview or nothing like that. It was actually brought to my attention by other motherfuckers, like multiple people and niggas who was around. Yeah. Niggas who was signed to the labels. Niggas who was, you know what I'm saying? That was like, bro, this shit gonna rub you the wrong way because it rubbed them the wrong way. Got it. And this is multiple people. And like multiple people was like, bro, that shit cat. Like this cat, this cat. And I'm like, all right, hold on. I'm going I'm to go look at it. I looked at it. I'm like, and it did rub me the wrong way or whatever. Yeah. Just like it rubbed them the wrong way. So I'm like, ah, nah, niggas, niggas kind of pitting out their own little story or I don't know, man. Like if niggas believe the shit that they say or this whole rhetoric of, oh, I didn't have the right team around me. You know what I'm saying? He, okay. he said that shit. So that, like, that that right there, that 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 sentence, that's what rubs you the wrong way. Well, that that was part of the part of the shit that rubbed me the wrong way. Okay. So he say, you know, he ain't had the right team around him. All right, cool. So who you talking about? You talking about your management? You talking about who? Because you know what I'm saying, from what I could see, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, niggas, niggas around him, you know what I'm saying? Definitely was talking. And nigga had management who was doing their thing. He had a publicist who was doing their thing. So it's like, what team you talking about? Yeah, who you talking about? Right. Yeah. So it's like that was that was the first thing. So then it was like the nigga made a comment of, you know, I was just more focused on helping the homies. I'm I'm like, nah, we we not gonna do that. That right. rubbed me the wrong way. Cause okay, like I said, we're gonna get into it. Yeah, let's but go. That that was when I heard that shit, that was all cap. And a lot of niggas felt like, oh no, that that's cap. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, but it was it was shit like that led up to me stepping the fuck off. I right. stepped off like 08, like, yeah, probably like 08 or something, or 07. I, I don't fucking know. But right. it was shit that led up to that, of me stepping off. So, you know what I'm saying? When I'm hearing this shit, I'm like, oh, no. Nah. He painting a story and letting these fans know, like, bullshit. So, yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm gonna clear the air and put it, put it the fuck out there. So who who would you who 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 would you say was the homies that was around that you know might have been the reciprocal or on the receiving end of this help that he was supposed to be doing? I I look. I literally can't tell you because let me see. It was me. I was around. Ancasa, Nero, Rad, Star, uh, Reek Rose. Uh, I think who else? And, and then it was it was miscellaneous niggas that was around, like you know what I'm saying. SAS was around, uh, D Gritty, Bugsy, you know what I'm saying. Bugsy, so yeah. it, it's like, who was you really talking about? Right. Did he like, help anybody? No. Like I can't. I can't really. All right. So. Fast forward, all right. I mean, rewind to when when I was around, right? Got it. When I was around, no. No. Besides, you know, uh, pit niggas on, on certain shit, like, you know, some mixtapes or some shit like that. And a nigga say, you know, let him tell it. He'll sit up there, because I done heard him say it before, like, yo, niggas, niggas, don't uh niggas take shit for granted. Like niggas don't understand how big an opportunity is. I understand that. Right. But I had multiple opportunities, bro. Like, let's not get nothing fucked up. Even after I start fucking with him. Like niggas don't know this, right? Jeezy tried to sign me to CTE. I introduced him in Jeezy. So that's how he know Jeezy. He don't know Jeezy from being on Def Jam, this, that, and the third, none of that shit. He right. know Jeezy because he was talking about in the studio, oh, yo, this, that, and the third. Uh, dog, I want to fuck with this nigga uh, on Def Jam. He he popping right now. Uh, young, young, he ain't even know the nigga name. Young, young, chisel, young, whatever. And I'm like, young, chisel, like, who, who the fuck is he to? And I'm like, young Jeezy? He's like, yeah, yeah, that nigga, that nigga. And right. I'm like, Oh, that's the nigga I told you when I went down to Atlanta was trying to sign me. He like, yeah, I had GZ number still. Yeah. This, that, and th he like, for real, that's the nigga you was talking about? Yeah, that's the nigga I was talking about. He like, man, that's crazy. I'm like, you want me to call the nigga? I called Jeezy. Jeezy like, yo, who this? I'm like, this Bezel. Bezel. I said, yeah, Bezel from Philly. Oh, oh, what's good, my nigga? I said, nothing, you know what I mean? Chopped it up a little bit. I'm like, yo. I'm in the studio with this nigga Joel's. I'm like, he wanted to holler at you. He's like, put him on. And, and from there, you get do what you do, make it work for you. Now, that, that's how yeah. the fuck it happened. Got it. So it ain't like an opportunity. No, I had deals on the table, bro, beforehand. Even right. afterhand, I had deals on the table. So, what what you talking about? We not gonna minimize your relevance. That's basically what you exactly. saying. Exactly. Same way exactly. you wanted to fuck with me, other people wanted to fuck with me. So, right. It is what it is. Okay. Um, when we had we had a prior conversation, and you said that some of the things that was happening within the Skull Gang in the diplomat setting was similar to some of the things that Dean was saying in his interviews. Would you like to elaborate? Go ahead and let uh, air it. Up. All right. So yeah, certain certain shit resonated with me, and I'm like, damn, is this what niggas really be doing? Cause uh, it was the situation. And, and for all y'all out there listening, like I said, you can fact check everything. Everything I'm fucking saying, same way like that shit with Jeezy. Y'all can add Jeezy. Y'all can add, ask this nigga all this shit, Coach K. Niggas know what it is. It's, so when Dean said certain shit, I'm like, damn, that's the same type of shit this nigga was on. So I'm like, damn, this what niggas be on? Like, niggas really be like this and shit? So, all right. 
I forget what year it was. Uh, Chuck Wilson, right? The fact check this. Niggas can hit up Chuck. He owned Baby Grand Records, right? Got it. Chuck Joel, Wilson. Joel's assigned to Def Jam. He got a million dollar budget. Chuck Wilson, he said he asked niggas in his uh on his label or whatever, all the all the personnel. They all told him, like, bruh, bezel next up, bruh. That's the motherfucker who you need to holler at. You need to get bezel. All right, cool. Chuck hollered that, reached out to me, this, that, and the third. He wanted to do a, a meeting. He wanted to take me and Joel's to Mr. Childs and talk, you know what I mean? Joel said, nah, like, ha have him come to the studio. We ordered some Chinese food. I'm like, what? Nah, nah, nah. This nigga, you know what I mean? Joel's never did the meeting. I wound up having to go to Baby Grand Records' office with his brother twin. He said $900,000. That's what that's, Chuck said to y'all? That's what Chuck said to us. $900,000 budget. That's a $100,000 difference from Joel's on Def Jam. Chuck was willing to pit up $900,000. He said, listen, I know niggas be shaving money you know, for advancement, you know, 200, 300,000. I ain't got that to give you. I'm pitting the 900,000 up. I need this to go into the project. He said, I can give you like 70,000 for your pockets. I'm like, 70,000? Bet, nigga. Bet. <laughs> right. I'm like, 70,000? Cool. Hey, nigga, I'm in, I'm in fucking hood still. Bruh, it wound up being a situation where it was uh so that's matter of fact, that's when the talk of the contracts came up. Like, you know what I mean? His brother twin wound up, yeah, you know, L's got the contract. I'm like, what contracts? Skull gang contracts. I'm like, I'm not fucking signing that. Listen, um, well, just that listen, well, when we come to the table with this shit, this, that, and the third. We can, I sign both of the contracts. Hold on. Now, what you're saying is once Chuck offered the um the nine for y'all, the, the 70 G's or whatever, the $70,000 advance, all of a sudden they wanted to put you on a contract. Yeah, but he, he was already talking about contracts. He okay. already was talking about contracts, but they were supposed to have been working it up and, and you know, getting it together. So even before Chuck reached out to me, niggas was talking about contracts because he was doing the Skull Gang shit. Right. But my whole thing was, what we need contracts for? I've been rocking out since 03. Right. Nigga, I'm on certified gangster at this time. Best out. All this shit already out. What the fuck we need contracts for? Huge songs. Yeah, huge songs. So I got tracks with the game, uh, Lil Wayne. And what, what we need contracts for? It is what it is. So, like, that kind of, like, you know what I mean, threw a monkey wrench. Like, I guess he felt some type about that. Like, damn, what's this nigga talking about? Whatever. Meanwhile, the 70 grand, oh, I ain't give a fuck. Like I said, 70,000, to me, it sounded like a good number, right? I was willing to yeah. bust that down half with that nigga. 35, 35. Let's right. go. Yeah. I take 35 grand because I'm already, nigga, I don't care. I'm trying to get on. So a $900,000 budget? Cool. I already, nigga, I had records and and stacked up. I'm like, let's go. I'm I'm ready. Nigga, I've been sitting since 03. Right. Let's go. Niggas, this, that, and the third. So it wound up being a John. Chuck was like, he wanted to do Joel Santana Presents. Joel's, you know what I mean? He come back with the, oh, you know, he was locked in a contract with Cam and all types of shit. All right. You know, uh, Cam ain't going to let uh, it go out and be a Joel Santana Presents. This, that, and the third. So he like, damn. All right. Well, how about this? Cam don't own no rights to Skull Gang, right? That's all you, right? right. Like, yeah. 
So he like, all right, we we do a Soul Gang Presents. So I was like, all right, yeah, we could do that. Then he come back. Yeah, well, Cam, he owned the rights to me because I'm still signed to him as Joel Santana. So he's not going to let me be part of the project. He's not going to let me uh, be on any of the records or promote it in any way. So, and Chuck like, but I need you to promote it. He like, well, Cam ain't going to let it. So that deal got deaded, right? I finds out later when I stopped fucking with the nigga, Cam never even knew about that deal, dog. Wow. Cam never even knew about that deal. And it, it was it was funny to me because it's like, hmm, damn, I never seen this nigga Cam cock block nobody shit. Cam, every time I, I, I seen that nigga or heard anything, he'd be like, yo, nah, go get your money. It's always been that type of shit. But you know, I'm just believing what this nigga's saying. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it just was crazy. So that was like one of the drones that led up to me stepping the fuck off. Because when I stepped off, I just stepped off. Like, he didn't right. even know, like, I stepped off. He just thought I went back to Philly. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm ghost, bro. And that's what it was. So what you're describing is, similarly to Dean, is he kind of like handcuffed you, wouldn't, wouldn't allow you to make any moves. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, and I know of other other people who artists where they got little, like, all right, you know the Philadelphia Beast. I, I did a deal for the Philadelphia, Philadelphia Beast on a little white label. You know what I mean? Short Shot Records. White labels be cutting you checks for mixtapes. 10, right. 20,000, this, that, and the third. So that's what I did for the Philadelphia Beast 1 and 2. I got a check. You know what I mean? Then money on the back end. All right. It's niggas that, you know what I mean, who had situations, and he told me this nigga be like, nah, nah, that ain't no real money. That ain't no real money. 10000 ain't no real money? To a nigga who ain't getting it, cool. Cool, you getting 10000 a show. But to a nigga who, who sitting around ain't doing shit, dog, like, everybody to fuck around was in the street still or had jobs. Come on, bro. 10,000 ain't no real money. To a nigga with nothing, yeah. I exactly. 20,000 ain't no real money. Fuck that, man. Nah. So, it, to me, while that you was there, not to cut you off, while you was there, was you allowed to make any other any other plays, shows, sell features? Like, can you boogie at all while you was there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I did my own shit. See, you got to understand, I'm from Philly. They, you know what I mean? They from New York. So it was, I get features. Yeah, I, I do features. I did features for niggas. Niggas in Germany, Australia. Cool. But when it came to really eating, no. A nigga ain't let nigga like, really didn't do anything. I, I like the fans probably think certain shit, and it's like, and that's why I wanted to do this and let niggas know, like, no, it ain't what the fuck y'all think, man. Like, even I right, rewind back to when he dropped his album, what the game's been missing, right? The fans don't know, but Mike Check was a song me and him did. He had a verse, I had a verse. And then we went back and forth like Kids and Styles. I went back to Philly. Next time I went up, he like, yo, I did that John over. But we always did songs, uh, a gang of songs. So it was like, well, what John you did over? I don't fucking know. We did a bunch of shit. He like, oh, here, he play it for me. I don't fucking know what's going to pop. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, oh, all right. All right, cool. Mr. Postman, I was on that. Went to Philly, came back. Yeah, you know, I did that joint over. What joint you did over? We did a old gang of, I don't fucking know. 
So you figure Mike Check, Mr. Postman, and then Violence. That's what I would have been on on his album. Uh, I... Damn. Yeah. What was his um what was his explanation for doing let's 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 go with Mike Check because that was a big one. Nah, that nah, was... nah, nah. I mean the like I said, I, I didn't look at none of these records like, oh nigga, that's the one. Like that's the even certified gangster. I, I really ain't want to do certified gangster. Like we went to the studio and uh Jim had it playing. And Jim already had his verse, his first verse on there. Cam and Jim was writing, writing verses or whatever. And I asked Jim, I'm like, yo, let me get on this drum. Jim said, uh, well, nah, Flea already doing a uh, a verse, and I'm I'm doing my second verse now. He like, but you could do the hook. I'm like, I ain't want to do no fucking hook. But then I said that I said to myself, you have nothing with Cam. You got shit with Jewels, you got shit with Jim, but you have nothing with Cam. Man, fuck it. Build up your resume. Yeah. And I did that shit. I did that hook in like 10 minutes. Before Jim and Cam had their second verse done, I'm like, all right, I'm ready. He said, ready for what? Uh, with the hook. They looked at each other like, Snake about to spit some bullshit, bro. Because I did it so quick. And then I went in there and I did certified cancer. And that's how that happened. So I never looked at Mike Check or Postman. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, truthfully, I, at that time, I didn't even have a sense of uh, what a hit was, what a radio hit was. I Like, niggas know. Like, you can look at certified gangster. That's not even, that's like eight bars. I'm spitting on that, John. Like, yeah. and you ain't going to give me a verse, but I'm going to get a verse out, a half a verse or something. You know what I mean? So I didn't have a sense of, oh, that's going to be a hit. That's going to be a hit. That's going to be a hit. So when he played Mike Check, I'm like, oh, all right. I just looked at it like, oh, all right. We got a ton of shit. But then you use all these records for your singles. It's like, if, if I'm your artist, and I'm the nigga who you whatever, then you would think, like, one of them. Like he would introduce you. Yeah, yeah. That, but that never was the case. That never was the case, and that never was going to be the case. I got, and I appreciate it, you know, violence, you know, heat makers did the beat, cool, you know. I. But that's what it was. It never was going to be a... He never really pushed anything. If you look at everybody, like Cam had JR or Cam had Vado or the Locks had J Hood or niggas was pitting niggas out there. He yeah. never did that with me. Yeah. So that's that's what it was. So when he say helping the homies, it's like helping them out. Helping them out. Yeah, helping yeah. them out. What what Was did you, you in do? a video for certified gangsters? Nah, nah, I wasn't in the video for Certified Gangsters. And like I said, I, I be seeing niggas, uh, you know, be giving Jim flack over that. That wasn't Jim's fault. I actually uh, had changed my number, and I, I just so happened to call the Def Jam office. Uh, Sherry, I forget her last name, but uh, she was our uh, assistant. So I called the office, and Sherry picked up. So I'm like, uh, Yo, anything on the calendar? Like, that's coming up? Like, shows or anything? She like, you supposed to be in Cali. And I'm like, fuck you mean I'm supposed to be in Cali? Shooting a certified gangster video? And I'm like, she like, Jim been trying to call you for like three days. And I'm like, oh, shit. And then they tried to give me a flight. It ain't work out. So I missed it. You know what I mean? That's, that's on me. So I don't really, you know what I'm saying? Damn. Yeah. So that's how that that's how that went. So I don't really, you know, niggas be grinding Jim up or or saying look, no, it wasn't Jim fault. Like it it was all on me.
So, you know what I mean? I don't know what to say. I understand. I understand um, how you feel about it in regards to his statements on Art of Dialogue. I was trying to help the homies and shit like that. Yeah. It's like, I, listen, a nigga say, like I said, an opportunity. And I didn't heard him say that even, even when we was fucking with each other. Oh, niggas, niggas don't, Niggas don't appreciate opportunities. Niggas don't understand opportunities. And you know, and you hear not just him, but it be rappers all the time. And they say shit like, oh, you know, nah, I bust my ass and I I, I do this. I'm not, nigga, my money is my money. Like, don't, cool. I respect all that shit. Ain't nobody asking you for your money. But don't stop. Niggas from getting money out here. Right. It's it's enough money for everybody. That's like my 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 man said. That's like me and three three other niggas, right? We chilling, three of my homies. And four bitches come over. But I'm I'm cuffing all the bitches. Yeah. Fucking how? It's a bitch for everybody. Right. Why am I cuffing all the bitches, bro? And that's what it was. It's it's money, dog. I'm not taking nothing out your pocket, but I'm going over here and getting getting my bag. Right. All I need you to do is co-sign some shit. Yeah. Niggas wasn't doing that. Sound like it do sound like the Meek situation with the guys yeah. that was around him. It do. Niggas don't be playing team ball. I've spoken about that on this platform. The insecurities, greed, just suck a shit, man. Um, yeah. I salute you for being able to maintain your composure. It, it was a time that, you know, my fucker might have flew off the handle and did something in, in, in those situations. <laughs> That's crazy as hell, man. That's crazy as hell. It's, man, listen, it's it's all types of shit, bro. Like, niggas, niggas really don't understand, like, and niggas uh, say the opportunity shit, or you know, you ask a nigga what he did, and I ain't taking nothing, nothing away from the nigga. You ask him what he did, he'll say, "Dog, I gave niggas a place to record, right?" Yeah. Which he, which he did. He had his own studio. He gave niggas a place to record and, and all that, and just that a third, but. I feel I feel like this. Didn't everybody give somebody, even if they ain't had their own studio? Like Jim had his bird gang niggas. Max B, Stack Bundles, all, all them recorded. Yeah. They they wasn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pretty sure Jay Hood and Jada and them was making sure, you know what I'm saying? Even even him. Who the, before you had your studio, niggas, like. How the fuck was you recording? Nigga, Cam, Cam was letting you record. Right. So let's not get it fucked up and act like he, he when he say that, he did some shit that every fucking rapper out here ain't do. Yeah. That, that's how I look at it. Because if I would have went with another situation, Jeezy would have been letting me record. Right. Or, or this nigga would have been letting me record. So... When a nigga say that, it's like, what you really saying? What did you really do? Let me say something. It 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 seems like I seen this as a common occurrence. Some niggas in rap be thinking um taking a picture is enough for a motherfucker, or just being in a room or being around and shit like that. They think that that's a form of compensation and shit. I think that's terrible. I've seen it often. I just I interviewed a guy from um, Trenton, New Jersey, named Big O. He was in a situation with Fat Joe and Jada Kiss. And he kind of like the same thing that you were describing right now. Yeah. It's crazy as hell. Yeah, that's so, my guy, um, too. When, when was the last time that, that you spoke to him? The last time I spoke to him... Um... Probably when when he uh got out of 
when he got out. What was that, like February, like last year or something? He been out for a little bit. Yeah, he been out for a while. How was how did he go about reaching out to you? Nah, nah. Uh, we went through uh Instagram. Like I reached out to him. Like you know what I mean. Told him welcome home or whatever because you know. That jail shit is is some other shit. Like, I don't really wish that on nobody. And right. niggas don't know, like, you know, if, if y'all don't know, like, I went through some shit. I had a stroke. You know what I mean? And he reached out on Instagram and hit me up in my DM or whatever. And I'm like, yo, appreciate the love. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. So when he came home, it was the same shit. Yo, yeah, glad you home. Sure. Just that in the third. And we right. chopped it up. And, you know, about family, his kids. I'm like, damn. Like, he had kids that I never even fucking met. And vice versa. He, I'm like, dog, I got this many over here. Like, I'm like, that's crazy. So we chopped it up. Then it was, we were supposed to work on some music. Of course, that never happened. Like, you know what I'm saying? Which is cool. Like, because right. I really wasn't in my music bag. I kind of was falling back from the whole music scene anyway. Yeah. So, you know, uh, yeah. So it it was cool that we never really get shit done. Like, you know what I'm saying? But we ain't really get shit. I mean, he didn't really, he ain't really did shit since, you know, yeah. even before when he, you know, or after. So, it, it, you know, I can't feel no type. It ain't like he was flooding the streets. Yeah, he didn't do uh, much Yeah, he ain't really did nothing. So, you know what I'm saying? I can't really be like pinpointing and be like, oh, nah, this nigga was trying to, nah. I ain't even look at it like that. Like, you know, he ain't really been, been active. And I ain't been active. So it, it was cool. Yeah. Like, we just ain't do shit. But, you know. Um, did this this look not to cut you off? This skull game actually become a um that never was an album. That just was the song Aggie and a couple of other joints, right? All right, so I had already stepped off by by this time, but by that time, okay, yeah, by that time. But uh, what I can say is what I heard from niggas who who was in Skull Gang. They like they dropped the mixtape, right? And they were supposed to have been doing an album. But the mixtape got re-released as the album. And that's because they had a shitload of music, but Juels never did verses on none of the songs. So he kind of left them niggas for dead. That That's what I was told. Like, I can't. Like I said, I stepped off by that. But that's what niggas told me. They like, oh, yeah, it got re-released as the album, but that wasn't supposed to be an album. We had a shitload of music, and this nigga never put verses on none of this shit. Which, you know, I can't really take it for whatever. Like, is it believable? Fuck yeah. So... You know, when niggas say that shit to me, because I know what I saw when I was around. Yeah. So when niggas say that to me, I'm like, oh, shit. Well, yeah, that probably is right. Because a nigga not really concerned with, you know what I mean, what niggas is doing, like, or how niggas is eating. So... You know what I mean? When, uh, when you uh when we announced, I think it was yesterday or the day before that we was gonna do this interview, I put a, a, a specific caption on it and I, I tagged those involved. You heard from him, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He he uh hit me up and he shot me his number, which I already had. It and he he like, you know, pissed something like, yeah, you know, just in case, you know, like I just don't, in I don't, case, I don't, what? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know what I mean? Reach out to him. Like, I guess because of the caption you put on there, it was yeah. like, nah, he, he go my number just in case, you know, niggas want to get at me. I, I, that's the way I took it. But, right. dog, it, 
like niggas who was around, bro, I didn't got multiple calls, bro, from niggas who was around. And they like, yeah, that nigga, that big cat. Like, <laughs> that's how niggas is. It's like, so it ain't just me. Yeah. I'm talking about niggas, rappers, fucking non-rappers, fucking niggas who was around, just entourage niggas. Niggas know what it is. Is that is that do you think that was his motive to what? establish his own entourage? Because at during this time Jim started that, you know, he started the mob up. Jim was moving with his own little mob and shit like that. Do you think that was his intentions to keep you all around as an entourage situation, but he didn't intend on really helping y'all musically and shit? Nah, I don't I don't believe so. Like I I don't think he uh, it was on some shit like the keep us around as an entourage because he really ain't push us. So when you when you thinking about you know what I'm saying certain shit, uh, like all right, prime example, right? Where he grew up at. All his his niggas, he got certain niggas. So if you listen to his music early on, he say certain names. That's his niggas. Right. But I feel like and always felt like because they didn't give off this perception or this image that he was trying to pit out to the people, he kind of strayed away. From whatever. And then he started hanging out with whatever. Like certain people. Yeah, niggas will leave their homeboys behind. <laughs> yeah, because duh, I'm like, and I ain't trying to whatever, but it, it it was like funny style. Like we was right over the bridge from from New York studio in Jersey. So and it was like his niggas who who he grew up with and shit like that, it, it, it kind of seemed like they wasn't allowed at the studio. Yeah. And then on top of that, in which I ain't fought none of them for the shit, but it's like I used to get the flack because if I came up from Philly, right, I would come up from Philly. So I would just randomly come up, right? So say I come up, but he going to Miami to do a show. He, he going to be going for two days or he going out L.A. He not going to tell me to go back home. You know what I'm saying? So I give him that. You know what I'm saying? He would give me the keys to the crib, the keys to the, his car, keys to the studio. All right, cool. But the studio in Jersey, I'm by myself. I'm getting fucking bored. I'm going to go to the city. Who the fuck do I know in the city? I don't know niggas in the city. So I'm going to his block. Because I know the niggas on his block. Them niggas, yeah. Yeah, where he right. from. But right. when I pull up, I can feel the tension. It's like, they kind of like, who the fuck is this nigga? Like, they know me, but they still like, no, we this nigga day ones. We ain't got the keys to the crib. We ain't got the keys to the studio. We ain't driving around in the car. So that's, and I'm like, I'm forced to deal with this shit. Because of what? Yeah. I didn't toss, like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not stunting on y'all niggas. I'm, I'm coming to fuck around. Yeah. Like, but I'm left to deal with that shit. And other niggas told me the same shit. Like, they kind of got the flack because they always went to the hood and shit like that. And niggas, you know, when they did, it was like, yo, this had the third, yo, else. And it's like, so it, it was sort of like that. It's like, you know what I mean? Certain shit I ain't even going to touch on because I ain't really trying to pick niggas the fuck out there. But now you should, you should because we here. No, 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 no. yeah, but 
you just, wasn't given any decency when he was taking you off them records and shit like that. So nah, you got I, something on I, I really your heart. I really ain't care about being taken off the records. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, I ain't really know what a hit was. I didn't know Mike Check was gonna pop. I ain't know Mr. Postman was gonna pop. He was just doing records. So it is what it is. But a nigga I'd never tell you, like, oh yeah, Bezel was on this shit. Oh, Bezel was on this shit. Same way a nigga I'd never tell you, oh yeah, Bezel introduced me to Jeezy. Nigga, I'd never tell you. And then certain shit, it's like, dog, I never got an alley you from the nigga. Like, the fans probably think, because his relationship with Wayne, like, any songs I did with Wayne was him throwing an alley you. I didn't get no fucking alley you from that nigga. The first track that I did with Wayne. They was working on I Can't Feel My Face. Right. Wayne sent over a track. It had currency on it. And Wayne did a verse. When Wayne sent it over, Wayne said, yo, I got my uh, my, my artist. I, I threw my man on that joint. You should throw your man on there. Joel said, ooh. That was, that was his response to Wayne. Ooh. He said, your man from Philly. That's how I got on that record. Right? Boom. Fast forward. Like I said, I would just pop up. Pop up to the studio randomly or whatever. I pop up one time, Joel's and Wayne in there. They must have been going through beats. Just that and the third. And uh, they really couldn't find nothing. So when I come in, Joel see me, yo, yeah, yeah, this nigga, though, he always got some shit. This the motherfucker right here, he always got some shit. Yo, I know you got some shit in that bag, bro. I said, yeah, yeah, I got some shit. Popped in some shit. They vibing out, yeah, 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 this joint. Oh, yeah, 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 this joint. So they take a couple joints. Didn't know from that, Wayne thought I did beats. No, I don't do beats. I got beats, though. Niggas send me beats all day. Right. So, But Wayne thought I did beats. Because Joel said, oh, this nigga always got some heat. Fast forward, I don't know uh, how the nigga got my number, but Wayne probably asked Joel, like, yo, what's your man Bezel number? I, I'm in Philly. I get a call. From Wayne. I said, yo, what's up? I said, who this? It's Wayne. Wayne who? Wheezy. I'm like, oh, oh shit. What's up? He like, yo, you think you can send me some shit? Like, yeah, yeah. So you think you can send me some beats? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll send you some drums. Send me your email. He sent me the email. I send him some beats. Send him a shitload of beats. So I guess the beats that I sent him. He recorded some shit to him. But he thinking they my beats. They not my beats, bro. Right. I'm getting beats from Odds and Ends, from Knoxville, from different fucking producers. Right? Wayne goes on MTV. He does an interview on MTV, and they asking him about the Carter Three. He had Showtime with... uh. Swiss beats, right? So they asked him, oh yeah, just that and the third. Who you got? You know what I mean? On the on the joint. He's saying who he got, just that and the third. They like, who you got production wise? Like who? He like, oh, I got Timberland, I got Cool and Dre, I got Swiss, I got uh David Banner, I got Jay Bezel from the Dipset Camp. My phone blowing the fuck up. Niggas, yo, 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 Wayne just was on MTV saying. You on the car to three. I'm not on the fucking car to three. Who the fuck who the fuck told you I'm on the car to three? Dog, this he just was on MTV. He said this, uh, listen. So mind you, I had way number from from that shit. Right? So I'm like, man, fuck it. 
I sent the nigga beats. Like, man, fuck it. I'm going to take a, a, you know what I mean? I'm a, I call him. Yo, yeah, I got this John. Like, I was going to see if you could put a verse on it. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Send that John to me. That's how Fresh Dress came. Hmm. Boom. Just like that. I never got no fucking alley from a nigga. So, like I said, I didn't heard niggas then said, oh, damn, I thought, fuck, no. I never so got you, out, bro. So you ultimately got a verse from him, but he thought you was you was a producer and shit. Yeah, like he knew I was a rapper. Yeah, but he thought I did beats too. And it's like, no, I, I don't do beats. I was getting beats from niggas, and Wayne just was using some of the beats. So it was, that's what it was. But I never got an alley you, but niggas. To this day, niggas think that shit. Niggas like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this, that, and the third. Uh, you know, Joel's plugged you with, nah. He didn't do that shit. He didn't even plug me on the first job. Wayne had to sit up there and say, yo, I threw my man on him. Talk about currency. Yeah. I threw my man on that joint. You should throw your man on him. I ain't even get offended when the nigga said, who? Because it was it was a lot of niggas around. But truth be told, like, even though it was a lot of niggas around, not to say it like that, but I was the nigga. Yeah, you had you you, you had already proven yourself. So, even 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 when we had and I'm not taking nothing from nobody, but niggas will tell you, and I, like I said. Everything I'm saying, you could fact check. It's Fendi facts, bro. We had a meeting one time at the studio, and this nigga said, his exact words, he was telling niggas, he said, dog, everybody got a, what a, I don't care what niggas done did in the past, what whatever. He said, everybody got to earn a spot. He said, nobody got a spot on Skull Gang right now except for Bezel. He's the only nigga I know. I ain't got to hold his hand and go in the studio and he's going to come out with some heat. That's exactly what he told in front of everybody. Right. That's what he's... So... Dog, like... It is what it is. This is... This is not... You know what I mean? Like... So when niggas say, you know, helping the homies and all of this shit, it's like, where? How, how did you help niggas? It, it, it's, it's, it's just certain shit. And it, it's like, a nigga don't owe you nothing, but then it's like, but when a nigga earn his own shit, don't block his blessings. Right. And it that's really what you was doing. Like, it is what it is. That's like, we would go on promo tours. We go all around the fucking U.S. He would take Mia Ancasa. Dog, Mia Ancasa up at different radio stations, burning this shit down, freestyling, all that. He never did that shit in New York. <laughs> never been to Hot 9-7. Yeah. Never, never, never touched radio in New York, bro. How the fuck? What you did for niggas? If if he got invited to whatever or he was doing something on the radio, niggas would be in the fucking car or back at the studio listening to that shit. Oh my god. Yeah. That big facts. That's what the fuck would go on, bro. That's the type of shit that and it's like, well, damn, I just was Virginia, South Carolina, North Carolina. Florida, this dog, me, me, me and Un, we we burning shit down, dog. Not in New York. Not in New York. I never even did radio in Philly with that nigga. With Jim, it's hold it's on, it's, hold it's so, footage. Hold on. So so on, Santana bro. would come and have to do, let's say Cosmic Cab or something like that. He wouldn't even feature you in your own city. Nah. I don't I don't even know if 
when he ever did. I'm pretty sure he did Cosmic Kev, but no. I never did Cosmic Kev with that nigga. I did Cosmic Kev with Jim. It's footage of that. You can go on YouTube and see that. Never, never with you else. Never in New like, York City. Seem like you describing a big, big, I don't know. It's a big difference between working with Jim and working with Santana. Jim kind of known for like putting niggas on and shit. Listen, that was that look, Jim. I ain't got nothing bad to say about Jim, right? Jim is part of the reason why I stepped the fuck off, right? Because, and not in a bad way or whatever. So Jim popped up, and, and, and I'm going to explain this, this situation, right? Jim popped up at the studio, at Joel's studio, right? He was expecting Joel to be there. Yo, where are that? That nigga, and, and he had to do a show in Canada or Louisiana. I don't fucking know. He's going to be gone for two days. So Jim like, oh, damn, this happened third. So he just, you know, shooting the shit. What you working on? I'm like, I'm working on, you know what I mean, this, that, and the third. But at the time, this is when so-called, you know, Jewels is locked in with Cam. They, they, you know, the discrepancies over the contract and all this shit. So Jewels really can't make no moves, which we're being told now we can't make moves because of this. Right, so I'm. I tells Jim like, you know, he he in the shit with Cam, and so I'm just waiting on that shit. So we can't really do shit. So Jim, listen, he give me advice. Listen, don't wait on no no fucking body, bro. Jim tells me that don't don't wait on nobody. This that and the third. Uh, he said, and he gave me some advice. Yo, do this, do that. So. Jim always been like that type of nigga who, who would give me, you know what I'm saying? But then Jim say, listen, I got a position as head a and R at Warner Brothers Asylum. Yeah. That as soon as I got that position, I called Juel to say, let me pick Bezel album out. He said, Juel said, nah, Bezel my artist. And, and that was the end of the job, right? So mind you, I keep hearing shit, right? Listen, this this is why I stepped the fuck off the way I did, right? So I I keep hearing shit. Another situation popped up, right? And I ain't gonna say whatever because I already know how niggas play and I don't, I don't want it. Like, I want everything to be a fact check. You know what I'm saying? And I feel as though this other shit, if I say it, it's like niggas uh, feel like they got loyalty to, you know what I'm saying? But it was some some shit from Young Money side where niggas told me about some shit, and I'm like, "What? I ain't know nothing about that." They like, "Yeah, the niggas talk to Joel's about it." That, bro, no, that shit ain't never. But that that's on some whatever. But the shit you can fact check. Jim told me that, right? So Jim say, "All right, that happened." Later on, when I talked to Jewels, and he was whatever, we had a uh, conversation. This is like after I stepped the fuck off, like a couple years after. And he was saying, oh, I, I did nothing but try to help you. I'm like, yo, you did mad greaseball shit. Like what? Like what? I said, you want to run it down? I brought up the, the Young Money shit or whatever. I brought up the shit with Jim. When I bring up the shit with Jim, his reaction is, why you uh listening to that? Like, he lying, right, bro? So for me, right? So say my man, right? Like, I got a man, James. That's my fucking ace boom cone. That's like my brother, right? So if you come to me, right, and say, "Yo, James told me this, that, and the third, this, that, and the third," I'm not gonna say to you. Oh, why you whatever? James lying about that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'ma tell you, you're a fucking liar. Right. James ain't tell you no shit like that. Yeah, I wouldn't say that about my guy. Yeah, yeah, that's my man. So I'm not gonna say that about my man. I'ma tell you you lying. So that's yeah. how I knew it was a lie. 
I'm like, come on, bro. Jim ain't just telling me this shit and whatever. And then when I say it to you, finally, it's like, why you why you listening to Jim? Jim, oh, he lying. No, the fuck he ain't. And the fact that you saying he lying, that's more confirmation for me to be like, you're lying. Yeah. That's how I took it. So it was like, it really was nothing to talk about. Like, it was different shit like that. So you got, then I got, you know, you 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 cock blocked the deal. Cam never knew about the deal. You just ain't wanted to go through, but for what? That's what you really got to think. For what? If I'm your artist, you going to get paid off the shit anyway. Yeah. The nigga was talking about 70000 Dog, I would have bust that half. Straight down the middle with you. Yeah. And it probably ain't no real money to you. Man, let me eat. Yeah. But why you why you not letting me eat? Like, you're gonna eat off this shit regardless. So it was like it was just funny style. And I'm like, man, fuck that. I'm out. But it was it was different shit leading up to it, man. Like it, it was some funny shit. He went through the shit with uh the cam situation. Where he, uh, you know, he felt as though Cam was holding him back and this, that, and the third. I stepped off. I came back to Philly. I started hustling and shit, right? I thought I got kids. This, that, and the third. I see in the, in the fucking news, Def Jam bought Joel's out of his contract with Cam for $2 million, right? Right. I'm like, bad, nigga. Now we can get busy. We can get busy. I come back up. Joel's ain't there, right? But everybody else is there, right? And niggas is like mad funny in the studio. Like, oh, man. I'm like, what's up? Like, it's like, nah, like, that nigga else feel like you abandoning them. Like, you abandoned them. Like, when shit got rough. I'm like, when shit got rough? What you talking about? Ah, like, you know, he was going through what he was going through with Cam and, you know what I mean, niggas. I'm like, bro, what the fuck I was supposed to do? Sit up here? We can't make no moves. We can't get no money. No, nigga, I'm out. Yeah. As a man. Man, shit. Yeah, yeah you, you, you can respect that, but no, nah, that's what I got. Like, nah, niggas, bro, it's, it's wild shit, bro. That... And that's what I'm saying. So when I see this shit and niggas kind of be like, nigga tried to help and nah, bro, that's not it, bro. It even was a situation. Dog, I wanted to do a party in Philly, right? Right. Ask this nigga. Went, went up to the, to the studio. Had the money on me. Ask this nigga. Yo, how much? I already was prepared. I already know what you get in the show. So I already know, like, mind you, cool. I ain't got the 10 clip. I got like 75, though, for him. You know what I mean? You ain't going to charge me the 10 clip. That's how I'm feeling, right? You ain't going to charge me the 10 clip, bro. It's me. But I got 75 for you. Yo, what you want? That's what I asked him. What you, what you want? Nah, I ain't going to charge you. Nah. What you want? Yeah, I don't, we don't that's, yeah, niggas try to get out like that. Nah, yeah, hell no. Right? <laughs> Listen, I I already felt I already felt like it was a curve, like it was some type of spin move, right? So I'm like, nah, what you want, bro? Like, even if you're gonna discount it for me, what you want? Because I'm like, I'm I'm amped up. I'm like, I got the bread. Like, yeah. nah, I ain't gonna charge. All right, cool. Fast forward. Day of the show, just that and the third. I talked to the nigga. Afternoon, it's, it's bright and sunny out. I talked to the nigga. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to come down to the Turtle Top. It's going. All right, cool, cool, cool. You know, clubs is from ten to two. Ten o'clock come. Just that and the third. I'm calling the nigga. Enough, 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 enough. Call him, call him. I'm like, what the fuck? I wind up being like 12 o'clock. Call him. He pick up. You. I'm like, what's up? He like, what's up? I'm like, what's up? He like, what's up? 
man, I'm like, man, fuck this. Like, you you on your way? Like, what what you doing? Like, he's smoking and shit. Nah, man. we need to uh, we need to have a talk or whatever. So I'm like, okay, what's up? Yeah, talk, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, what's up? He like, uh, we need to talk face to face. Face to face. I just was up there with the fucking men on me. What is it to talk about? Of course, that show ain't go down. Come on, bro. That's what you did up. for niggas? What you did for niggas? Like, all this shit is leading up to me stepping the fuck off, bro. Come on, bro. Talking about what <laughs> nah, real shit, real shit. No. So when I hear, nah, real shit. So when no, I hear, in the comments, <laughs> what? Somebody in the comments say, "Man, I got a feeling Cam knocked Joel's teeth out." <laughs> man, listen, because that's what I was thinking the whole time, the whole time after the show situation. The shit that you just described, the way he played you today, the night of the show, the next thing was to break his fucking jaw, yo. Like, for real, like, that, the, 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 oh, my God. The relationship should have been totally over with, and I understand, but that's a piece of shit-ass, junky-ass nigga, man. I'm glad you was able to get on here and speak about the disrespect, the short change, the, 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 the cock block and all that shit. Man, listen, man. Like it's it's so much shit, and like I said, it's niggas that that was around, and I understand it. Like niggas don't niggas niggas don't really want to say like niggas don't want to be the 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 face and be you know what I mean pit it nah, out fuck there. Fuck that, man. Speak no, 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 shit, man. These no, niggas I... need to be exposed, man. That's some sucker shit because. When he when he upstaged you at the show, when he didn't come to that show, that was disrespect. Oh, yeah. That was disrespect to your pro professional reputation. Reputation, yeah. You know, but that's what I'm saying. what I'm saying. It's it's shit like that, but that's what I'm saying. That's and I don't know why I, I expected nothing. And like I see, like I told you, it started out as business, right? right. And we became friends, but Bro, I see how you do your friends. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Niggas, niggas don't know. Ankasa is, that's not a nigga he met through rap. Right. Like, un been around him for years. I'm talking about when that nigga Jewel's got a Sega Genesis for Christmas, un was right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, dog, I see how you do your friends. So it's like, that really don't hold no weight for, for a nigga to say, nah, we was friends. Like, bro, I see how you do your friends. Yeah. I, I, shit, I see how you do nigga. Listen, that's like Duke the God, right? That's my man. My man. I call him Panthro from, from, from the fucking Thundercats, right? right? That's my man. So he burnt, he burnt fucking Duke for like 60 grand, bro. Come on, and that's Duke. Yeah. Duke been around since day one. He's the foundation of, of the. He burnt Duke for like sixty grand, bro. Like when 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 all that shit was going on with with uh, DJ Drama with the racketeering and all that. Yeah. Duke said, "Oh shit, they going they gonna get me." He gave that nigga like all sixty grand, bro. He dumped it out of his junk. Yo, hold that for me. Once them charges was whatever, he went back to go get it. Jewel's told that, that I ain't got it. He said, "Yo, what you what you mean? Listen, that that that's for the more than you've been getting paid off my mixtapes. You uh, all the all the work I done put in the more than musics and all that shit. What? Come on, bro. Come on, bro." If you could do that to Duke, nigga, it ain't nothing that, you know what I mean? So it, it is what it is. And we could keep going on. Like, I could I could pull out stories from, dog, niggas who around at 
man, listen, bro. It ain't what niggas think it is. So, you know what I mean? So before a nigga think, you know what I mean? Like, nah, this ain't and this ain't no green light. I ain't trying to bash the nigga or nothing. Dog, I ain't. I stepped off at like 08, 07. Dog, I ain't spoke on none of this shit. Never. They, they, they just said in the comments something else that I was thinking. That shit sound like some dope fiend shit. Sound like dope pink, expensive drug habits. Listen, it sound like dog. I never spoke on nothing, bro. But when I see an interview and a nigga try to paint a narrative that that wasn't the narrative, fuck that, bro. Nah, I I, I got to speak on it. And other niggas, you know, and I I dig it because you know other niggas still get active. They they still be active with the music. I, like I said, you ain't going to see no link in my bio. I ain't got no EP dropping. Fuck that. Everything I'm telling you is Snapple facts, bro. I'm not doing this for no clout chasing. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. Other niggas, I understand. All right, you don't want to be whatever because you don't want to turn it. You still getting busy. All right, I ain't. Right. So, so I don't it. give a yeah. fuck. Yeah. So I be the nigga who who pit it the fuck out there. You know, certain certain niggas, uh, you know what I mean? It was a nigga Stevie Q. That's uh develop, you know, develop a producer. That that was his little brother. Deve uh, like Steve did a uh uh an interview, he was talking his truth, and they they labeled the shit like Joel's enslave me or some shit like that. Like and he was just talking about different shit that was going on. And, you know, man, it's, it's, listen, these fucking rappers got to understand. Cool. You work for your money. You don't owe a nigga nothing. Cool. You don't owe a nigga. If that's the case, don't fuck with a nigga then. Yeah. If you don't, if you not going to do whatever, don't fuck with a nigga. Yeah. I could have went the fuck yeah. off and, you know what I mean? Other niggas, you never know what nobody could have been. You you don't know what an uncasa could have been. You you wasted niggas' time. You wasting your own time. Like, come on, bro. It's, it, it's, it's clear. It's out there. Like, so you definitely wasted our time. Yeah. So it, it is what it is. So with that being said, yeah, I mean that's that's what it was. But you don't know what a what a what a Ancasa could have been, a Nero could have been, a Rab could have been, a Star could have been. Oh, you 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 did absolutely nothing, but then you you kick out this rhetoric like you did everything to help niggas. No, that ain't the case, man. So that rubbed a lot of niggas the wrong way, bro. Like, my shit was blowing the fuck up. And that's why I said, all right, nah, I'm going to speak on it. Because a lot of people got gripes. A lot of people felt like that was cap. A lot of people, you know what I mean? So that's what it is. And everything I say is, it could be fact check. It ain't like um, nothing. Niggas can reach out to Cam. You ever knew about a deal? There's a Cam, no, I ain't know about no deal. Reach out to Jim. You said that to Bezel? That you was the head a and R at, at Warner Brothers Asylum and you called you out? Yeah, I told him that. You could reach out to tag Jeezy. Yo, this, that, the third. He introduced you to Joel. Yeah. At, reach out to, uh, what's the nigga from, from Baby Grand? Chuck Wilson. Oh, this, that, and the third. Joel's gave you the run around and told you all this shit and this, that, and the third. Did you have $900,000 for that nigga? Was you going to cut that? Everything is a fact check, bro. I'm not going to get up on here and say nothing that I ain't telling niggas go back and check them facts. Right. So that's what it is. I ain't going to elude niggas and say all of this shit. And it's like, come on, man. It's, it's bullshit. Right. Let's check the facts. Difference is, he was saying a lot of shit in the interview. And it's like, that ain't the facts. Because, of course, I'm saying what I'm saying. And a lot of niggas was hitting my line saying, nigga, that's cat. Right. So it is what it is. Come on, bro. 
one thing about the truth, it's illuminating. And um, I believe everybody here believe everything that you're saying. Cause I know I do. I know I do. I, I pretty much, I know the truth when I hear it. I got a great sense of character, judgment, and shit like that. It's fucked up. Um, it's very believable because just look at how the diplomats ended. Just look at just look at it. it we never seen nothing nothing that like fragmented and became ugly like that. Like and this is a big ass iconic group, but today it's just nothing. And that's probably because of all of the ugly shit that niggas did. For real. Everything that you said about Jim, I believe it because we watched him put niggas on. Sandman, no, um, Sin City. Just it, 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 the list goes on. He gave a lot of people opportunities that was visible that we watched with our own eyes. And you even said it yourself. He was calling you, trying to get you to that um, certified gangsters video yeah, to the LA. Yeah, I, don't, I, I, dog, I ain't got nothing. Jim ain't never do nothing but try to give me game. He, he always told me, bro, it ain't, it, it don't matter what you, what you think you worth is what you negotiate. He, he told me different shit. Don't wait on niggas. He told me. Yo, do that. So it was even one point, and nigga told me, "Yo, bro, that's what you want to do. Go, 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 go back to Philly. Go to the club. You and your niggas start fucking niggas up. Like, <laughs> just, just nigga always cause a problem. Get it popping. Like, <laughs> that's Jim. That's yeah, Jim, Jim was always like that. Jim was always. He just was. It, it just was game. Like, so." I'm not going, you know what I'm saying? I don't got nothing bad to say about you. You know what I'm saying? It, it always been game. It always been, you know, shit. Right off the bat, look at Jim fucking album. I was on Certified Gangster and This Is Gangster. Two tracks. Right. I I didn't, I didn't, Jim ain't bring me in the door. This nigga Jewels brought me in the door. That nigga Jim pit me on his fucking first album, bro. Two tracks. Shout out to Capo, Passing the Rock. I love Team Ball. I love hearing about Team Ball. But um, I wasn't prepared for all of this. When you called me and told me that you had some things to say, I didn't expect it to get so dirty and ugly. Like, listening to this shit, I actually, it actually changed my mood. For real. I'm in a dark place. <laughs> I'm in a dark place right now behind this shit, man. I just... That's yeah. fucked up. It's fucked and, up. And, and, and it's a lot of shit that I didn't say, man. And that's the crazy part. I, I didn't say a lot of shit, but it's a lot of shit that I didn't say, bro. Right. That I had, listen, psh, had niggas like, what? Psh, what? Listen, nah. So it is, it is what it is, but, you know. Right. You 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 said that it ain't no link in my bio. I ain't got nothing coming out. So you done. Yeah, they, they niggas gonna call you about music after this interview. I just want you to prepare yourself for it. Man, Maybe I'm some I, I'm I'm quite certain people are gonna call you about music and shit. Listen, my man my man told me that. My man said, yo, niggas is going I I don't give a fuck. I told him. He said, Nah, I know you got some shit. Yeah, I got some shit. I got some shit in the tuck. I got some shit that's unreleased, but no, I'm not, I don't want to do that. Cause I don't want, like I told him, I don't want nothing to take away from this shit. I don't want nobody to say, oh, that's why he was doing that shit. Yeah. So I'm like, if niggas do reach out to me, too bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe six months from now, a year from now, I'll release them tracks that, I got in the tuck, but I don't want nobody to try to say, oh, I was clout chasing for this shit. Nah. It was a lot of niggas who was around who felt some tight about the fucking interview and definitely was like, oh, that's big cap. Oh, that's cap. Oh, did you see that shit? That's cap. Bro, every nigga, everybody. I'm talking about everybody, bro. Shit was crazy. But like I said, the fans don't know. But if you know, you know. 
They know now. Yeah, if you know, you know. Like, it, it is what it is. So, we're not going to do that. So, you know what I mean? But, nah, I, ain't, I don't want, nah. I'm glad you was able to um, stream my mute. Nah, none of that shit. I don't want my streaming to go up. Nothing. I want y'all to know the Fendi fucking facts, bro. I don't no want y'all to look at an interview and hear some shit and be like, oh, for real? Nah. Listen to this interview and be like, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, play this shit other... back. Yeah, play this shit back. Yeah, don't listen to that other bullshit and, you know what I mean, uh, how niggas will make it. Nah, fuck no. Niggas ain't never do shit. Like, niggas really ain't do shit for niggas, except for Pitney, like, yeah, I give it to him. Pick me on your album. Take that out of the equation. Right. What did you really do? Because everything, you know what I mean, was set up to help you, bro. Every, like, that's how it really came off. It come off like, you know what I mean? It, thought, it, it was niggas in Philly. Nigg, thought, my niggas is like, yo, this nigga... He's I already rapping. know how Philly carry it. I already no, know. No, already no, know. but that's what I'm saying. Like, niggas who was around, like, my niggas is like, they listening to the music, like, when I start fucking with them, right? And they like, bruh, this nigga rapping different. You you don't notice that? And I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm naive. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm just looking at it like, man, I'm just, nigga, I'm getting busy. I'm doing whatever. But niggas is like, Yo, he, he rapping different. You could hear you could hear the shit. When I when I first got down with him, first album, I wasn't on that. He had already wrapped that up. That's right. what he sounded like. Right. If you listen and go back and, and which I did, and I, I, and I don't know, I, I kind of was like fooled or whatever. I kind of like went back and listened to the mixtapes, and I'm like. Dog, like only real tracks where the nigga is like lyrically getting busy is like tracks that he on with niggas who's lyrically getting busy. Like y'all ain't gangster. Yeah, you 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 come with cause you know I'm coming. That shit he had with Bugsy. Something at the clock pop. Niggas ain't stopping at the red light, pull up in the drop top and dog, Bugsy was getting off on that shit. So, of course, you're going to get off on that shit. But the other shit's like, listen to that shit, I'm like, the fuck is this? I'm like, nah. Niggas, hold up. The fuck was going on? Who's niggas, you know what I mean? Like, not, not trying to take nothing from when he got busy, he got busy. But, you know what I mean? I'm listening to shit. I'm like, damn. Nah. And... Nigga just was maneuver like he was just maneuvering. You could see the switch or whatever. But then, man, listen. Let me, um, let me interject before we get up out of here. I don't think that you not putting out music. I don't think that's what's up because you got a gift, and um, you still you still here and you're still able. I don't think nobody's going to pass judgment on you and consider this clout chasing. Jewels ain't even a factor in music no more. He's not. He's, he's he, not listen. a factor. He's not coming back. Like the shit that he said on the interview, yeah, I'll be back and niggas going to see. We don't believe none of that shit. We don't. It, 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 we don't. We don't. And um, I think if you, if you got something in the clip, because niggas is going to contact you after this interview, niggas who want hooks, niggas who want to get busy. To, Producers that got beats, they in this, they in the comments and shit. They gonna reach out to you. So at this oh, time, nah, I want niggas, to... if niggas want some features or some shit like that, cool. I be whatever. But as far as my shit, nah, I ain't, I ain't really letting go of none of my shit because I don't want niggas to take nothing away and be like, oh, oh, this nigga, now he dropping a project. Yeah. He, he did this. It's going to end up being a project anyway, man. You already said it. You said maybe a year from now. So you still got it in you. I, at this time, I need you to drop your, your, your contact information and your, um, your, your Instagram so these niggas can catch up to you like they supposed to. 
Oh you yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. Follow follow my Instagram, uh the real J Bezel, uh at T H E underscore real underscore J A Y B E Z E L. That's my shit, man. Appreciate your time. If you got anything further, we can do this again. I 100% support you. You've been supportive of my platform. Y'all go check out a previous interview I did with Bezel a few years ago. Um, I'm going to close out now, man. I, again, I appreciate you being here. And when a nigga call, don't answer the phone. Just move on with your life because he going to call you. But that's all I have for now, people. Bezel, you got anything further you want to say? Nah, man. I'm j- Listen, fans out there, listen. Yeah, I got the real shit, man. Yeah, don't believe don't wanna, the bullshit, man. A nigga got his head, his head band smacked off his head and threw to the ground in Madison Square Garden. He cooked. <laughs> he cooked. Oh, I, don't care. I don't care about none of that shit. I'm out, I'm out man. Y'all know where to find me on IG at I am Gully TV underscore Twitter, Gully TV one. And go to the website, man. Make sure y'all go get the PA Knit Dynasty. Bezel, I'm out. I appreciate the time. If you want to give me a call afterwards, we could build. But that's all I have for now, everybody. I hope y'all enjoyed the show. All right. Peace. Peace.